In this video, we provide a deep dive behind the scene on designing data movement in ER Studio. We cover how you design source to target mappings manually as well as visually. Then we discuss the values you get as a data architect when documenting your data movement transformations and defining data movement rules between disparate systems. Finally, we will show you how you can share that information across the team. We are looking currently at ER Studio Data Architect. I have already opened the data model. This is what we call a source target database, which is merged from different source and target systems. I see a logical data model and then you nose wind physical model, and this is the old model. So I would like to define the source target map. I'll go to the data lineage tab and just right click on the other sources. I can import a new source as uh, uh, in the manual process, or I can just create an import a new source. This is what I'm going to do. I can post from another DM1 file, repository based file, SQL file, or reverse engineer from a live database. Yeah, I would just pick up my source data model in this case and go next. I pick up the physical model, uh, select all tables, and it shows me now a compare merge uh, difference between these two. So I would like to merge it into the current and say just finish. And the source is now I see the data model. The best thing would be just to rename it and call it um, source model. If you look into this source model, you will see the cast table consisting of first name and last name, uh, which is uh, now concatenated in the new physical model under customers. If I double click on customers, it takes me to the column and now it is moved to the contact name. So this is the mapping which I would like to define. So there are different ways of doing it. So before doing that, what I'm gonna do is I will just create a data movement rule. That means I define what is going to happen with the data when I move it? I will define a staging archive period rule. You have, of course, different rule types. So under the rule text, I will just copy the information I need here. And I say, OK. Now we go back to the data model and define the so-called manual data lineage based on the table and column level. The first step to do that is just to right click and define the so-called data movement properties. So we can have different source levels of data lineage and target levels of data lineage. You can also have direct and secondary as well. In my case, I have just one data source. This is my source physical model. Pick that up and say, okay, so once this is defined, now we can go to the customer table and define the mapping. Double click on customers, go to the data lineage tab. And on the table level, we can define how often the data is sourced, just as an example, weekly. And I say the date is whatever it is. So this is the information I can type in on the table level. On the column level, I can double click on the contact name and go again to the data lineage tab. Now I can define that on the, what are the source columns. In my case, the customer first name and last name are the source columns. And the transformation logic is something I'm going to copy here. Basically, you can put any script here. And you can also define the business logic behind it or the description of it here. So basically, this is the way we define that. And this is tied to the source columns, the transformation logic, and information is available. This is what we call manual data lineage. The second type of data lineage is on the data lineage tab. It means here we define a so-called data flow. And let me right click and just create a new data flow. And we call it concatenate data flow. Okay, so under this data flow, you can use different transformations, component shapes. Of course, you can use multiple data flows here. 
For the components, we just drag and drop the objects which are involved. For example, my customer table here on this side from the source and the customer table where it is going into. Then in the middle, we can type in basically the transformation, what is we need here. Click here, transformation drop here. Can the data stream can be defined from customer to transformation, from transformation to customers. Once this is set up, we can double click on the transformation and give it a good name. Let me call it contact net names. The type is uh, maybe kind of selecting to in this case. And the columns, we can specify here the input columns. Here in this case, first name and last name. On the target side, it flows into the contact name. And the definitions, of course, I can use my business definition back again. And go to the code as well and take this code into this system. So under data movement rules, I can still use um, data movement rules, which I've already defined and so. So basically, once this our information is set up, you can basically define what information you would like to see. For example, you would like to see the drawing names, all that kind of things can be specified here. You can also use um, beautifying methods. For example, you can use shapes in order to show something um, like notes on it. Uh, for example, here I can put a note, double click on that note. Shape text could be something like uh, merging first name, last name with this. You can use some colors and fonts. Some will use a background color, change the text font size maybe to 16 or 14. Um, and any kind of information can be added into it. Basically, if you like, you can also use an arrow line in order to define, okay, customer name, last name is flowing into this one. So you can use basically here, uh, for example, web phrases in order to, to define um, those kind of properties. That means if I double click an object, can source the styles been defined, um, moved to, Um, can also use uh, another WordPress, for example, whatever you like, you know, in order to definish. You can, of course, change the colors, uh, uh, for example, for your mapping in a different colors um, than, than, than the line systems itself. So once these uh, things have been defined, you would like to share that information, of course, with uh, other team members. For that purpose, we can use a uh, number of marks macros available with the tool for example we can use the data lineage export to excel um me you can use it for example i can just select this customers table only and go to data lineage export to excel and that's run the macro selected objects direct source mappings so the macro walks through the tables and generates an excel sheet and that excel sheet can be um, shared with your team, for example, your team members who are able, for example, to go here and analyze the data and to look into the, this table and change it as they like it. And uh, once they are finished, they can send it back to you. And you are also able to import the data lineage import from, from Excel as well. What we have is also for the visual data lineage, you are also able to uh, uh, export uh, that as well. Here in a visual data lineage, export to Excel. If I run this macro, the same kind of job is done here. Um, it will be exported to Excel sheet here. here in this case, uh, you see all information what we have already defined. And it can also be imported back into ES Studio as well. And the last thing for sharing we're going to show to you is the generate reports. 
um, I can create HTML or RTF reports. In this case, I'm just generating an HTML report. I select all objects here in this case. In the data lineage, also all objects. So that I'm not missing anything. On the shapes, of course, let me generate the shapes as well. Go next step, maybe select all the diagrams, all the data lineage diagrams as well. And I go finally say finish. So the product creates now an HTML report, fully clickable. And interesting for us now is maybe the data flows. This is a concatenation, the diagram which has been generated is available and all components are here visible. You see the different data sources which have been here as a source physical model. So you see the, all the table objects as well. Um, we created also for the customer tables under customers contact name here, for example, we created um, the source mapping before and uh, on the column 11, this is also available for sharing across the team as well. Just to recap, we were able to show you how you can design mappings from source to target using a manual data lineage based on table and column level. Then we discussed how you can define data flows to visually document the ETL data lineage between different systems. The values you get are first that the data architect is able to easily document the source and target mappings, transformations, and data movement rules involved between different source and target systems. And second, you are able to export and share the data lineage information across the development and operation teams via integrated macros and reporting tools. For more information, please visit us at idera.com and contact sales.